As a culture we humans are slowly shifting toward an easy mindset. We want everything to be easy, quick to solve and live an utopian life of no problems. We see advertisements all day of a problem-free life that awaits us only if we buy their product. Social media feed, fake Instagram pictures, with perfect filters displays an infinite stream of happy people living what appears to be a problem-free lives. And we are struggling with our problem, which makes us feel insecure. And, the more insecure we feel the worse the situation will be as it will numb us or stop us from taking adequate actions. When we sabotage to take the right actions, we can't solve that problem, leading to more insecurity and more numbness. For example, you feel bad about feeling bad, or you beat yourself up about being angry and then get angry about getting angry and feel like shit. Or you feel guilty for every mistake you make, then you begin to feel guilty about how guilty you are feeling. The author Mark Manson called this the feedback loop from hell. It can absolutely drain your ability to take actions and slip into addiction, gluttony or something worse. Well, you can overcome and go beyond this feedback, as it is based on a lie of problem-free life. Because if you lived longer than two seconds, you know pretty much everything especially the things that are worth striving for involves a good deal of struggle. The only people free from problems are the dead people. Problems never completely go away, they just got replaced with better and bigger problems. For example you buy a new house, you think you have solved your house problem, but now you will have the problem of maintaining, cleaning, painting, taxing etc. You get a promotion, now your money problem is solved, but now you have a bigger team to handle, bigger projects to deal with and more responsibilities. So through the course of this book, author Mark Manson's core message is to stop stressing about living a problem-free life, as they will never go away. But the key to living a good life is to get good at solving problems so you exchange your problems for better problems. And how do you do that? By choosing your own problems, or finding the struggle that's right for you. Mark Manson believes that our generation is stressed and dissatisfied because we have too many options, and we are trying to have it all. He suggests that we should stop giving a fuck about things that don't matter. Instead you should redirect your stress into pursuing the struggles or solving the problems that matter to you. For this to happen you need to live with intention and attention. You have to define what you really want from this life and understand even after you will get that, even your ideal future will bring you some struggles along the way. As you seek a goal, you must understand it's not choosing the goal or intention that will make you succeed, but the daily mundane looking ordinary struggle that you will go through on this journey. But saying no to the wrong struggle is as important as saying yes to the right one. Mark believes, if you choose the right struggle your suffering will lead to happiness. Because the people who choose and strive for the struggle of gym are the ones who run triathlons and have a strong and fit body and the people who sit for long hours in front of a computer screen while struggling with their codes are the ones who became professional programmers. The subtle art of not giving a fuck is about only giving a fuck about things that matters, struggling for your values not for your whim or instant gratification. And the only real compass you have to align yourself with is your core values. Your core values are your internal compass which works as the filter through which you run all life's demands, requests, and temptations. The other way of living is experiencing life through shitty values like Pleasure is happiness. When you prioritize pleasure over everything else in your life, you are more likely to fall victim to toxic habits like drugs, overeating, or cheating in relationships. People who value pleasure as the most important experience in life are most likely to become anxious, depressed, or fall victim to substance abuse. Another shitty value is seeing material success as a benchmark for our lives. Just material well-being doesn't make us happy, and it doesn't help us grow or evolve. We human beings need more than just material well-being. It might be the base where we start, but it's not the end. In fact, studies have proven that once we reach a certain point of financial security, wealth doesn't further add to our happiness. We humans have reached the point where physical pain is no longer an issue for a big part of society. What we are suffering most is psychological or emotional pain. All emotional and psychological pain results from our values being violated. If seeing your friend's new car makes you feel jealous and angry, it's because you value material success more. Maybe your car is in good condition, but still his new Tesla is causing you pain. Now you might decide to buy an even nicer car. 
which will demand you to work for extra hours and take a loan from the bank as well. But you must ask yourself, is it really worth it? You must decide which values are worth struggling for and which are not. Whenever you are struggling with a problem, ask yourself what is the underlying value that is causing me emotional pain. Then, determine if that value is worth struggling for. Only you can answer that question based on your unique set of core values. The objective is to be aware of shitty outdated values that you are needlessly suffering to uphold and replace them with meaningful values. Most of us tend to gravitate towards shitty values unconsciously because we don't have our solid foundation of worthwhile core values. A good way to start and formulate worthwhile values is to consider these three standards. Are they? Based in reality in a way they are achievable and really helpful for you, not just based on what the priest or the book says. Helpful to society? And most important controllable? For example, living healthy. Living healthy is a great value and it meets all three standards described above. You can control it. You may not be able to control how much your friend makes and which car he buys, but you can surely control what you put in your body and how you use it. It's based on reality. Surely you can achieve it, and good for you as well. And I guess healthy people are indirectly contributing and helpful to society in their own way. So yes, it's a good value. You may also want to choose honesty, creativity, generosity, minimalism, or maybe living a rich life as well. Whatever it is, the most important part is, it should be yours. That's it. A great example for the need of setting your values right is Dave Mustin. In 1983, he was kicked out of the band he had formed with his friends Metallica right as they were about to get their big break. Dave struggled for the next two years to perfect his skills and finding talented musicians to form a new band, which did really well and went on to sell more than 25 million records. Meanwhile, Metallica became one of the world's most successful bands. While Dave's venture was successful, he couldn't shake the feeling of inadequacy as he compares himself to Metallica. It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. Like Dave Mustin, Pete was also kicked out of his band The Beatles. For a while Pete became very depressed, but after a while he realized that music was his biggest priority in life, not fame or success. And if he truly wanted to live his passion, then he had to stop letting success define his life. Even though he went on to play with less successful bands, just by realigning his values, Pete lived a happier healthier and more sophisticated life. So the moral of this story is, whatever you do just don't compare yourself to Metallica. As in the famous words of Jordan Peterson, compare yourself to who you were yesterday, not to who someone else is today. The last but most important lesson of this book is, take full responsibility for your life. It's the advice that everyone gives but almost no one follows. And why not? World isn't a fair place. There are people born with silver spoons in their mouths, and then there are people who get robbed from all the possible joys of life. Okay, so you are not where you want it to be. You think life isn't fair to you and others get those things easily. So you complain, you blame others and spend a significant portion of your life feeling like a victim of life. But how complaining and blaming is going to help you? It won't. In fact, the truth is, if you are not careful, it will be too easy to slip into a permanent victim mentality which will stop you from taking responsibility for your own life. The more you complain about how unfair your situation is and become angry at those who caused your problems, the further you will be from resolving your current problems. So that you can evolve and experience better problems. If you are busy focusing on who to blame you are stuck in the past. The very moment you stop blaming and take full responsibility for your problems you will be empowered to do something about them. Now you have no choice but to act in whatever best possible manner you know. Because taking responsibility is telling yourself if I am not in a better place a month from now it's my fault. I'm responsible for everything that happens or doesn't happen to me. Author shares a golden nugget here. With great responsibility comes great power. The first step is not worrying about whether you can solve your problems or not. You don't have to worry about how or from where you will get the strength and power to solve your problems. The first step is taking the full responsibility of your life. Then making a decision what matters and what not you will get the power and strength from unknown mysterious places. Mark shares another golden nugget. 
the desire for more positive experience is itself a negative experience. The acceptance of one's negative experience is itself a positive experience. So accept your present situation the way it is and take full responsibility for this. In 1872 William James' life was falling apart. At the age of 30, he was unemployed, he was also very ill. Feeling lost and purposeless, James considered taking his own life. But late one night everything changed when he come across the work of French philosopher Charles Pierce. James decided to conduct an experiment for one year he would take 100% responsibility for everything in his life. James called this experiment his rebirth. His decision to take full responsibility gave him a sense of purpose and vigor and allowed him to direct all his energy to improving his life. And after years of perseverance and dedication, James went on to become one of the pioneers of American psychology. So, next time you feel like a victim, remember James' story and try to channel your energy into taking responsibility for the situation. Because once you take 100% responsibility for everything in your life, you have no other option but to think about the factors you can take control or change for good. The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck is a highly entertaining book, filled with golden nuggets, solid advices, and old age wisdom. The bottom line of this book goes like this. Yes, you get problems, so does everybody. Yes, you got your issues, so does everybody. You don't need to solve all of them. Just solve the ones that matters to you and don't give a fuck about all others. Don't try to be someone else. Try to be you.